to do the mandatory $40,000 repair bill. What you have to do before you that that was necessary so the truck does not burn too big around. The hood would get shut through the windshield and potentially decapitate him. That company was fabricating his massive scare tactic with this customer. Hey guys, welcome back to their vlog. Ryan Wilson here from Predator Inc. Thanks for watching as always. Now, uh, we have a unique vlog today. So this actually comes as a request from our customer, the owner of this truck behind me. Now, if you recall, this truck was on a vlog, I wanna say about three weeks ago or so. Um, our techs drove it, as well as Paul drove it, and I drove it, and we all checked off on it. Drove absolutely perfect, awesome driving truck, and we shipped it out to our customer. He got a hold of it, drove it for about three days, put on a ton of miles. Literally, I think it was like 1,400 miles in three days. He's an avid driver, and he's gonna probably put on 30,000 miles this year on this truck. Unfortunately, power steering pump began to fail. When it started to fail, it would actually uh, lose a lot of the pressure at the lower RPM range, and it just didn't have enough strength to actually turn the tires. However, upper RPM range worked fine. So he took it to a local shop, apparently works on Hummers, and brought it in there, asked them to fix the power steering pump. And he stated to us, he's like, I wasn't even gonna tell you, because it's just you know a mechanical thing, it fails. However, this shop got a hold of it, saw the opportunity to badmouth us and created a whole list, literally $40,000 repair list of items that had to be replaced in order to drive this vehicle ever again. Everything ranging from the wheels are gonna fall off your truck to the truck is gonna burn down because of the two inch lift that you have on it versus three inch lift that they wanted to put on there. And then on and on. And so the customer saw through this, called us up and said, hey, this is what's happened and this is everything that they've stated. So there are items on the list that the other shop stated we never installed, such as ball joints. However, the customer has pictures from Paul. Paul sent him pictures of us replacing the ball joints, which we'll post here for you so you can see it. Um, we're gonna be completely transparent. We're gonna talk about items that uh, failed on the truck, as well as the whole laundry list, $40,000 worth of parts, including a $15,000 lift kit, which is absolutely absurd. Ultimately, the customer said, hey, please put out a vlog about this so other people know. Tell them about how I got screwed over and how the bill went from a power steering pump and it went into an inspection fee, not even fixing the power steering pump over here that he asked for. And then as soon as he said, you know what, I'm gonna pull the truck out, and they said, oh, okay, well, the inspection fee just doubled. Unfortunately, this is commonplace in the automotive industry. We don't condone that type of tactics. We definitely try to stay away from all the stupid internet stuff that's going on. That's why for years, um, we haven't really gotten into stupid internet battles. But again, we're very transparent. If there's something that we've done incorrectly, we'll address it and we'll, we'll definitely say, hey, that's an issue. At the end of the day, having open discussion about this type of stuff, does make companies better. However, when you have these situations where people are truly lying to other people in order to extort money from them, that's just, that's uncalled for and we won't stand by it. So we're gonna break all this down for you. So going down through the inspection first. So this inspection was literally a $940 inspection that wasn't asked for by the customer. It just showed up and asked for the power steering pump to be replaced. They didn't do that and they decided just to do the inspection and came back to him and said, okay, well, we didn't do that yet. We inspected everything. We did our photo shoot um, and then we did our internet blast um, uh, really attacking us and everything but what the customer asked for. But then that $940 inspection more than doubled to $2,400 as soon as he said, hey, I'm gonna pull that vehicle out of there. So breaking down this inspection, uh, getting in here, the air intake, uh, smaller Duramax air filter inside box, incorrect for the truck. It's not true. The air filter that's in that truck is a Duramax air filter that is designed for the Duramax truck. This is the stock air filter right here. Massive, heavy paper element. This does not work for a Duramax, it's putting out three times the horsepower and torque than a standard 6.5 turbo diesel in its best day ever. Uh, there's just no way. So what I have here is a Duramax air filter. Um, you can see it's pretty thin, very, very effective design. Allows airflow to go straight in and it also filters better than a paper element that the H1 originally had. 
and it is smaller, so I can see like from an uneducated perspective, this would be better than this. However, it's not. Um, and that's why Duramax um, and Chevy came up with this air filter. And that's what's being used in here. So if we put this air filter in there, first off, it would starve the truck. You'd have a lot of black smoke. Um, you'd, you'd just have all kinds of issues. Um, and it would not be the correct air filter allowing the correct airflow into the engine than this. So what we're doing is putting in the correct Duramax air filter. Um, they just don't know what they're looking at. They don't know what they're doing. And I've also uh, covered over all the names here. Um, I'm not gonna blast their name out here. Let me see, going down the list, the customer stated that the oil looks like it never been replaced. However, that's absolutely impossible because the customer has pictures of the engine disassembled and in pieces because we built up that engine in-house. It wasn't outsourced to somebody else. We do it in-house. Fresh new oil goes into it. Uh, believe me, it's a lot easier to put fresh new oil in than to try to go out in the back and uh, recycle old used oil to put in there. Makes no sense at all. But they did offer an oil change for $1,300. Let that sink in, $1,300 plus 7% fee on top of that too for shop supplies. The next one is, let me see, uh, power steering, yep, that is correct. That power steering pump failed, unfortunately. It was installed correctly and ran perfectly fine here because it's very simple to replace if it did have a problem. Customer got it back, ran great for a little while, um, probably a good thousand, 1200 miles before it started to act up. Unfortunately, mechanical things fail. 100% responsibility lies with us as well as the warranty lies with us and we would have actually paid this company to fix it even though their prices were probably a little bit drastic at I think it was uh, $1,200 or so to do a power steering pump. Uh, no, it was $1,000 to do a power steering pump and it cost us, um, if we were billing it out, it would have probably cost us about 300 bucks or so. Uh, but still, a lot easier than shipping it back to us and inconveniencing our customer. We'd like to just make it as easy as possible for him. The next one is the drive shaft. Uh, both drive shafts need to be replaced. Excessive U-joint, play, they're not balanced. Completely incorrect. Truck runs awesome down the road. There are no issues with it. However, what they're stating as the U-joints being uh, having excessive play, it's not. It's the entire drive train from the transfer case to the rear end. It's not the U-joints. U-joints are perfectly fine. Um, when you have everything from geared hubs to the rear end to uh, the transfer case, there's a little bit of play. Very common and in spec with everything else that was out there. Um, they also say to the customer that the drive shafts were in the incorrect angle and he needs new motor mounts. However, our drive shafts line up perfectly at uh, the same exact angle as the Duramax uh, Alpha Hummer from AM General in 2006. So there's no issues with that truck. There's no issues with ours. Now this is an area that we are completely transparent with and I would say 100% lies on us. Um, I can't tell you if it is uh, we missed it or if it failed afterwards. However, I would suspect it failed after it left the shop because we would have caught it. Uh, what it is specifically is the left front CV boot was uh, rubbing on a vent line. What happened was this vent line right here dropped down and came in contact with this boot for the half shaft. Ultimately, there was slack in the line going forward as it went up and inboard and must have dropped down. So um, there's little uh, Dell clamps or cushion clamps right here that hold it in place as well as up higher. So we tightened all that stuff up. They're already tight in place, but there's just a little bit of play in those cushion clamps, um, but we secured it a little bit better and that's never gonna happen again. But uh, that is an area that uh, definitely happened on our watch. We should have seen that or if, um, if it happened after the fact, which is kind of what I suspect because this is the half shaft that we had out. So we're putting it in here. We would have seen it come down and drop in place and come in contact, but ultimately quick and easy fix. Um, and we would have warranted that regardless. Okay, so the next one is on the transmission. 
Uh, says that there was uh, residual oil on there. We went through it, took a look at everything on the transmission, and everything looks like it's perfectly in spec. There's no active leaks on it at all. Uh, looks great. This is definitely um, a very dangerous one. The accusation on this one is that the uh, geared hubs were not assembled correctly. Two of the geared hubs uh, spindle nuts were not installed properly and the wheels are about to fall off. That was what was stated to our customer. And that's also what's on the uh, invoice that said, this truck is too dangerous to drive. You have to do this $40,000 worth of repair work. So backing up here, you have a spindle inside the geared hub that uh, has a nut on the end. If that nut comes loose, if it's not installed correctly, and there's a very specific protocol on installing that nut and tightening it down correctly, if that's not done properly, that wheel will fall off, typically at high speeds. Um, it's potentially very deadly, very concerning. And when that accusation is made, we definitely take that very seriously because we've been in business for 22 years and we don't have wheels fall off of trucks. So in this situation, we took all the geared hubs off, took a look at every single one of them to make sure they were torqued down correctly. So let's cut to that video right now. I'm gonna break down how it should be put together, where our mark is on there showing that we have been in there and it was done correctly. Now, we know for a fact they didn't open this up and they didn't check the, the torque spec on that. Um, and if they had done that, they would have seen the mark on this that Jared does that indicates where it was torqued down to. Now, one of the uh, statements was there were two spindle nuts that were literally about to fall off, uh, meaning that you would lose your wheel entirely. The whole wheel assembly would come off the truck, potentially killing somebody else or uh, the driver, the owner of the truck or his family, which is a huge accusation that we do not take lightly. Um, in fact, it's, it's quite unethical on their part to state that. Without the correct torque specs on here, the correct uh, assembly pattern, if that's not done, that's where this becomes potentially deadly. And that's why we only have literally two people in the shop that do it, Jared and one other person, and then our Florida shop, there's only two people that do it as well. And a lot of that's because of accountability. Why don't you run us through the, the proper process on uh, tightening these down? Okay, so after, after you put the whole geared hub back together, you go ahead and you tighten your, your locking nut uh, for the spindle to 40 foot pounds, and then you rotate the whole spindle five times each way and then at that point the bearings are seated so then you would loosen it retighten it to 25 foot pounds and then there's a little uh, allen it's like set screw that clamps the clamp nut down and you would tighten that to 90 inch pounds once you're at that point it's where it's at the correct torque specs you mark your line across it and then you put the torque wrench on it, set it to 90 foot pounds, and you go in reverse and you're trying to see if that mark moves. And if it doesn't move, then everything's done correctly and that tire's not gonna fall off. And that's one area too that does fail on these guys is if you reuse the actual Allen head uh, bolt in here to tighten it down, to lock it in place, and there's uh, some debris on there, it'll feel like you're at that 40, or what was it, 90 inch pounds? 90 inch. And um, you're not. You're actually like seated on a bunch of debris, so you always need to replace those little uh, set screws in there. Why don't you go ahead and back this off and see what it does. And the line didn't, didn't move at all. So yeah, um, another area that uh, was claimed that wasn't done correctly, um, which is just uh, gross negligence by the tech. Maybe they just wanted to sell their locking spindle nuts, um, but I suspect it was uh, more so to convince a customer that everything on the truck was done incorrectly and um, to lose faith in us. So that accusation definitely carries a lot of weight with me. And I can see it's either twofold. One is the tech has no clue what they're doing. They don't know really what they're looking for. Or secondarily is, and this is what I think it is, is that company was fabricating that to create this massive scare tactic with this customer so that he would keep the business with them and uh, allow them to replace these $40,000 worth of repairs that I have in my hand here uh, based on the scare tactics. And honestly, I'd be scared too. 
if I was told by a tech that I'm about to lose both my wheels, two of my four wheels going down the road, it could potentially kill my family, I'd be livid at, at the shop. Um, however, that's not the case. Um, and, and going down through all these other items here, you can see that it truly isn't. So let's, let's keep going here. So CTIS pump ran great while it was here. It got out there apparently in their, their inspection, they said it doesn't work. Uh, and it was also leaking air. So they said it's a $3,000 repair. They wanna take out the factory CTIS pump, which is an industrial grade, literally the thing is like $1,600. I mean, it's a phenomenal air pump. It's not the fastest, but this thing will run decades and decades without any problems. And they wanted to replace it with a cheap Chinese ARB air pump. And you can pick those things up for like 100 bucks, $150. But they're gonna charge them $3,000 and install that. Um, when in fact, CTIS pump is perfect. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'll show you what I'm talking about and what the repair was. Underneath the hood here, you've got the CTIS pump. Pretty amazing how resilient these things are. Uh, you can trash them and they just keep on going. However, this manifold's a little bit different story. If you get a little bit of corrosion in there, some dust to breathe, that's where you really gotta get in here and clean it out. But again, it's built very, very well where it's easy to pop these little valves off, clean it all up, put it all back together. It's like, I think it was like 30 minutes in and out and everything runs perfect on the CTIS pump. One of the more expensive items is listed in the mandatory $40,000 repair bill that you have to do before you can even drive the truck um, is a $15,000 lift kit. I think our lift kit's like, one of them's like 600 and the really nice one's like 1200 bucks or so. $9,400 is labor. So almost $10,000 of that $15,000 is labor. Then you also have another thousand dollars in shop supplies because they do a seven percent standard tax on everything calling it shop supplies. However getting into this they stated that that was necessary so the truck does not burn to the ground. They said that the truck uh, with a two inch lift is not standard. A three inch lift is standard for all Duramax conversions. That's not true. The Alpha Hummer from AM General 2006 H1 came with a two inch body lift kit. The reason for that is to clear the turbo. You had to get that uh, a, uh, the, the windshield frame up above that turbo because the engine sits so far back in the H1 Hummer. Two inches is perfectly acceptable through AM General. It's great with us. We definitely are behind that. But if you don't need to do a three inch lift, why would you? Uh, they stated that it was too close to the down pipe. The down pipe would potentially catch the truck on fire and melt all kinds of different stuff in there. You do have a fiberglass cover or a composite cover that goes over the engine bay. Tons of clearance, no issues at all with that. Um, AM General's 2006 Alpha, they don't burn to the ground. We're putting out five to six of these trucks every single month and we have been for years. We don't have any issues. And if we had any issues with this, we would have done a three inch lift if it was necessary. However, they stated to the customer, it had to be done to be safe and to be roadworthy. Again, it's, it's not common practice, nor is a 7% charge on everything that they do is common practice in our industry. Very seldom do you see shop supplies on everything. Uh, after they went on their internet tirade, we got a lot of calls from people, uh, other business owners in the industry, as well as a lot of customers who have had issues like that, saying that they're double dipping. When you work with us, either Joe or Paul in Florida or Paul Sanderson here, you're going to see an allotment or some type of discount given uh, if we're already in there doing work. For example, let's say you decide to do your brakes and then you want to do your half shafts too. Well, if you did each of them separately, I'm just gonna throw out these numbers because I don't have the times right in front of me. Well, let's say each of them are five hours. Well, what they're doing here is they're charging you for 10 hours worth of work. However, we're already doing half the work on uh, disassembling everything. So the really, the charge shouldn't be 10 hours, it should be more like six hours to do the same job. And that's not what we're seeing here. And that's not what we're seeing from other customers. In fact, we just have a customer that's pulling their truck right now uh, because they're double dipping on all these labor hours. Oh, this is a good one. So this gets into a situation where either the technician, the owners, they have no clue what they're doing, what they're looking at, or they're falsifying information to create scare tactics for our customers. Um, I kind of think it's a second part, which is they're trying to create scare tactics for our customers. What they stated to him was, if you're in a front end collision with this truck, the hood would get shoved through the windshield and potentially decapitate him and or his family. Either scare tactics here or 
They just don't know what they're looking at. And I do know that there's a few other items on here that the tech doesn't know what he's doing because he's a Humvee mechanic. He has very little experience in the Hummer world. And really in this situation here, the item is that uh, the catches on this truck are being confused for the hood. There are two brackets on this truck, one right here, one on the other side. And in 1992, that was mandated by the DOT, the Department of Transportation, that all Humvees, actually when they're converted over to a Hummer, the Hummers have that bracket on there. And the idea is in a front end collision, that hood is gonna be caught underneath this uh, cross member here. And it would do that, it'd be very effective at that, and you have one on each side, so you have full protection across there. This truck still has those in place. They're at the correct height. They will catch underneath here when the hood is fully closed. It's sitting underneath this cross member. Now, I suspect that the tech who made the statement or accusation that the owner went with, ran with, threw it out on the internet, probably doesn't know that these things exist or doesn't even know what they're for. Um, and that's one of the differences between a Humvee mechanic and a Hummer mechanic. So a Humvee mechanic, and we have uh, probably about five Humvee mechanics currently that work for us. Um, great, they got a good start at um, working on these trucks. Um, however, this is far different from a Humvee. There's a lot more systems, um, complexity on this truck that a Humvee doesn't have, never had as well. So we usually spend about two to three years training our Humvee mechanics to bring them up to speed. And honestly, it's, it's not just Humvee mechanics, it's any mechanic. Um, even ASE certified guys um, that have all the credentials in the world coming into this platform, they're very unique, they're hand-built, they're not a Japanese car that snaps together and very simple to work on. It takes a little bit of finesse working on these trucks. So that's what I suspect is that they just don't know what those are for. Backing up here too, why I'm going over this, this stuff here um, is specifically because he stated, the owner stated that he was going to go through our entire sales order, line item by line item, to make sure that we installed everything and that we didn't steal from our customer, which is implying to the social media world that we're stealing from them. And that's why um, I'm really touching on all this stuff. The ball joints, he told them they were never replaced. So roughly 22 year old ball joints that were on their OEM original ones. The customer has pictures and video, it will show some screenshots right now, of us replacing those ball joints where Paul Sanderson shot pictures during the build process and said, hey, your ball joints are questionable, we should replace those. And here's a video of a ball joint that's bad, it needs to be replaced. And, oh great, let's go ahead and do it. So we did it. However, they flat out lied to him and said because the ball joints have an undercoating spray on them that they are old. As you can see here, they are definitely not 22 year old ball joints. They have been replaced, um, obviously uh, stated and shown here um, on the other pictures that we sent to our customer. They have been replaced, they've been pulled out. Old ones are out, the new ones were in. Um, what really I think threw them off was we put a, a coating of under, undercoating on the truck and that's primarily to protect it. So I've scratched off some of the undercoating here so you can kind of see that it is shiny and new. But ultimately, what you're gonna look at is the actual quality and integrity of the ball joint. Um, taking this off, the ball joints were brand new. We know that they were brand new, but you can also look at the boot too, and the boot is perfect in perfect shape. A boot that's 22 years old would have been torn, ripped, fallen apart. Um, there would be no life expectancy out of that, or no life left out of that. So uh, ball joints have been replaced. Um, everything is stout here. Um, oh, one other area too that the Humvee tech didn't pick up on was these bolts here. He stated on the uh, recommended list of repairs to reverse these bolts because they're going the wrong direction. Now I see where he's coming from as far as you got this tire sitting here under uh, maybe a heavy turn or a tight turn under um, full articulation where this wheel travels up. It could potentially come in contact. I think that's what he's thinking. It won't come in contact with uh, uh, these bolts, but his, his thought was to reverse them the other way. You just have a shorter bolt head here. Problem with that and why it won't work is it pushes up the carpeting and specifically the floor mat. Now on this side, not a big deal, but on the driver's side, it is a big deal because you have your brake as well as your uh, gas pedal, your throttle pedal there. So you can't reverse those. And that's something that a Hummer tech would know, but not necessarily a Humvee tech because 
Humvees don't have the undercarriage protection or the rocker panel protection over here. So he's not used to that. So these guys are put in the correct way. Hopefully he's watching this video and he can make note of that in the future won't recommend replacing these the other way. All right, so next item is going to be in the theft category that they stated to our customer, which was that we did not install a Raptor tune on there. They're basing that off of the fact that that computer is not bricked. Now, what I mean by that is locked. Um, you can't ever use it again unless you have a passcode on there. We have and are very proud that we do open uh, source tuning. So we do the tune on there and we uh, allow our customers to tune it later on. So our customer stated to us that he wanted to tune it somewhere else afterwards. After he got it back, he wanted to add a little bit more power to it, kind of play with it a little bit with his tuner, um, which works out well because we don't brick these computers. We don't lock them down. And if they had known that, if they know what they're looking for in a tune, they would have seen that. They would have seen all the data tables change. They would have seen that the computer is tuned to actually work in this truck. An untuned computer from a Chevy truck will not work in this truck. There's no way. So um, again, they just don't know what they're doing here. And they're claiming that we're stealing and not installing this, com this Raptor computer upgrade, which we did do. Uh, but we actually took a higher road here and left it completely open so he can tune it on his own and he doesn't have to go out and buy another computer for 1500 bucks to then tune that now he's got two computers very frustrated to see this is common practice in the automotive industry that's not the first time we've run into it um, i definitely didn't expect it from this company i honestly thought that they were an up-and-coming company that we could be working with we work well with all the different hummer companies out there but when you have these scare tactics accusations of theft and we're seeing that a lot we're seeing a lot of complaints from customers calling in saying hey i saw what they're posting and that's how absolutely ridiculous. Here's my story. I got looped in on this free shipping deal, asked them to do the repair, and then all of a sudden I got hit with this $20,000 bill. And when I said no, my inspect I had some inspection fee that I never asked for that was thousands of dollars. And uh, that's one thing that we saw here was a $950 inspection up to, I think it was like $2,200. Jason, throw up the pictures, make sure they're up there. Uh, but the ethics just aren't there. We've been in business for 22 years. We're gonna be in business for much longer than the next 22 years. This is gonna probably go to my kids. My daughter absolutely loves Hummers and she'll probably take over this company. We're not going anywhere. If we treated people the way that they're stating we are and stealing from them, putting out a subpar product, a dangerous product, we would be out of business. We would have been out of business decades ago. However, we're not. You just talk to our customers. Now granted, we're gonna have a couple customers here and there we don't see eye to eye with. However, that's, you know, we'll do everything we can to make them happy and work with them. Um, but this type of stuff just, uh, this is bad. And unfortunately, there's unscrupulous people out there in our industry. Our customer had this gut feeling these guys were flat out lying to him. And then when they were, and he had the evidence of, you know, ball joints being installed, he knew that what they were up to and then asked us to put this video out. So hopefully it saves you some money in the future. Um, again, appreciate you watching. A little bit different vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you tune in next time. Hit the subscribe button and all the normal stuff. Uh, we got some cool stuff coming up, some cool builds, and we're going to move on from this internet drama and uh, keep moving forward. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Listed the mandatory $40,000 repair bill. You have to do it before that was necessary so the truck does not burn too big.